Hey loves, it's your favorite buying chick back on your screen with another one. I'm back with another Bake with Blindy. In this episode, I'm going to be sharing with you how I make my favorite chocolate chips. These are so delish and they're great for not only snacking when you just feel like you want a little bit of sweets but you don't want to go too overboard, but also to gift and give to your friends and loved ones. If I have enough time, I'm also going to share with you my raspberry cheesecake recipe. Don't hold me to that because the sun is setting quick, so we'll see what we can get done today. But let's jump in the kitchen and get this started. This first half will be voiceover style and then for the cheesecake, we'll talk as we go. I'm just measuring out all the ingredients. The hardest struggle is measuring out the butter. Those lines are so small. That's why you see my phone. Once I've made sure that I've measured out everything properly that's when I'll get to start mixing the dry ingredients I always measure every single thing out first before I start anything because I've made the mistake before it happens I read between the lines as someone who's legally blind and then I have the wrong measurements for something so now I'm just mixing the wet ingredients you can go for as long as your heart desires to make sure that the butter incorporates with the sugar before you add anything else the longer you do this, the fluffier your cookies will end up being. Once I've added all the wet ingredients, I'm gonna stir in the dry ingredients. It got really crumbly, so there was no point in using the mixer anymore. Plus, once you add the eggs, that's kind of like your cutoff point for mixing. I'm just using my hands, getting messy with it. At the very end, I stir in a whole bunch of chocolate chips. I'm not very specific with my recipe when it comes to cookies. I kind of just wing it and go with it depending on what type of cookies I want. For example, if I want them to be chewier, I'll add more brown sugar. If I want them to be crumbly like today, I'll add a little cornstarch. If I want them to be sweeter, more granulated sugar, that also makes them crunchier too. So anywho, you're seeing me just put them on the baking sheet. I'm gonna move them around so I can fit them all in. I can get it done in one round. They go in for 13 minutes. I leave them on the baking sheet for an additional five because they'll still cook on the baking sheet without overcooking. These cookies didn't spread as much as I hoped because I didn't add enough baking soda. So I'm just gonna use the fork. And now they're like this. They're really delicious. Don't ask why, I have no reason why I ended up stacking everything like the Leaning Tower of Pisa before I measured it out, but the same deal goes for the cookies as for the cheesecake. Every ingredient gets measured out before I start to mixing, just to make sure this blind chick doesn't make any mistakes. We're gonna add a lot of white chocolate chips today. I always add more vanilla extract than any recipe ever asks, just because I wanna really cancel out the egg flavor. Same with the sour cream, I'm adding more because it's a high fat content, so it's gonna make it creamier. For making the graham crust, I followed the recipes on the package, but I wasn't feeling it. We're taking matters into my own hand because I don't know what type of time the recipe was on, so we're gonna add a lot more. I'm gonna add a whole nother cup to this half quarter cup business. We're not chintzing anything over here since I barely make cheesecake. I might make it every few years. I think this is the first time I've made it since I lived here. There's still some left. Does anyone know what this blue plastic is for? I've always wondered. Now that that is well aerated, we're gonna add in our sugar. The recipe asks for caster sugar, which is just basically more finely ground sugar. I ain't got that. So we're just gonna use regular granulated sugar. My trick for any recipe is to always use less sugar than they ask for. I usually use a teaspoon less than they ask for. I know it's just a little amount, but trust me, less is more when it comes to sweet things like this. Add in each egg. This had to be the hardest one. Ew, vanilla extract. I always consider vanilla extract the thing that cuts the flavor of the eggs. I don't like baked goods that taste or smell eggy. How about you? Come on. No sour cream was wasted during the making of this cheesecake. 
This is just to make sure that it stays smooth. I wouldn't recommend putting this in the microwave, to be honest. It's so hard. You have to do it every 20 seconds, and it still doesn't come out as good as you just did the double broiler method. But we proceed. So I'm just going to do one more stir to so make sure I incorporated everything. See all their stuff on the edge. Triple check to make sure this is as even as possible. Pour it in. I'm going to add a little bit of this. What am I supposed to do with the chopped chocolate? Uh oh. I didn't want it to be too thick inside. Put this in the oven for 30 minutes. It's taken out a clock. Well, not quite. We're just going to turn it off and open the door. This is gonna allow it to slowly cool so it doesn't crack. We're not about that. I could have also put a big baking pan of water in, but the last couple times I did it, it still cracked and I had a heart attack trying to take hot ass water out of the oven. So I'm gonna try this method instead. We'll see how it works. Let's see what it do. to wrap this video off right. Look at this, guys. I'm so excited. I can't lie. This is the most yellow looking cheesecake I've ever made, but you know what? As long as it tastes good, that's all that matters. It did crack after all that I did, but I think that's because I had it in the fridge for two days. So it didn't look like this after day one. So if you do serve it within 24 hours, it'll still present well, but I'm proud if I do say so myself. So that wraps up another episode of Bake with Blindy. I hope that you enjoy. I'm just gonna be over here trying to keep the raspberries in place until it's time to serve. I will do a cutaway at the very, very end letting you know how it tastes once I share with my friends. I hope you guys enjoy this one. If you did, you know what to do. Tap the like, subscribe, share, all that stuff to show you care. And until next time, stay safe, stay sane, stay blessed. Love you later. Just, so let's see, hopefully you guys like it. The only way we can make I brought more cookies. Usually oh. I use heavy cream, but this time I use sour cream. Dun -dun -dun. And it's coffee and stuff. Like a coffee cake, basically. Not like oh my gosh, I can't end this video without trying this in front of you guys. Let me tell you what this tastes like. All right. My friends liked it, by the way. I was a little self-conscious the other day. It's tart, but it's still sweet. Personally, a little bit too sweet, but that's just me. But the tartness from the raspberry balances out the flavor of the white chocolate, and of course, just the richness of the cheesecake itself.